Welcome to Day One Patch. I'm Ryan Johnson. This is episode 34. If you don't know who we are, <laughs> this is the 34th episode. I you hope, know our names. I, I hope you check out the other ones. But yeah, it's a, it's a video game podcast. We talk about everything video games. And with me, I am joined by Martin Isaacs. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Matt Lawrence. Yo. Adriano is off off learning. Jerking Sons off. Sons petty. Hmm? Sons petty. Sons petty. He's jerking off. Don't lie. Matt? Language. <laughs> you're not you're not Siri. I know. Uh we're gonna start off with what we're playing. And Matt, what have you been playing this week? Um, I think you, GTA. You be, that's course. what you should say, yes. Um and not getting much progress done, I'll admit that. Um, now why is that, Matt? Because the game is too detailed for me to take in. <laughs> um for example, I'm I'm freaking out right now because um you know those like you know how like on highways they have like the medians or whatever, and they have like the garbage cans with the water in them. Mm -hmm. But there's those other ones that are shaped kind of weird. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that the reason why they were shaped weird is because they would like kind of like sponge in like a, like a slinky. Well, I found that out in Grand Theft Auto <laughs> because they actually put that in the game, and they have like things that plug in, like things like all the electronics actually plug into walls and stuff like that. And like there's defrosters. Mm -hmm. So the detail is ridiculous. So I just keep running around like figuring out what I can do. Yeah. And buying stuff and. Well, what's amazing is that first of all, they made one of like, the biggest maps I think ever, right? Is that? It's pretty damn. Big. Is that true? It's pretty damn big. I don't know, but let's how just big. say it's one of the biggest maps for, open, in open for world the, game. For, they're at the thought of at very least, like yeah, for the series. Um, and and the de the amount of detail they shoved into this is just amazing for that size of a map. I w I was like, yeah, I was freaking out over the uh, the power strip with all the stuff plugged in underneath the TV. Yeah, yeah. And then if you look at the roads and the highways, they have like the patchwork done that oh, you yeah, see yeah. on all major highways. And there's like areas that are like like uh what do you call it, like grooved or whatever when they're like for like when they're going to repave or whatever. There's like areas of the highway yep. like that. Yeah. It's pretty damn cool. So it's absolutely amazing. And we'll, we have more stories coming up about uh, about GTA, so we'll get to that later. Uh Marty, what have you been playing? I've been playing Red Dead Redemption. Another it's Rockstar game. Long ass game. Um but I'm I'm loving it. I'm sinking my teeth into it. I like to buy games that I'm gonna get a lot of value out of. Mm -hmm. So Rockstar is the place to go. Yep. Um, but I'm I'm in the f I guess so you can call it the third act of the game. So I'm nearing completion, and then after that, gonna move on to something else, mm -hmm. possibly GTA. Oh yeah. Yeah, since everyone else is playing it, I'm not. Got to got to keep up, right? Yeah. Uh, I've been playing GTA Five as well, um, and I've also been playing Sotor on the side. I'm getting back into that. If, no. you'd, like, if you'd like to join me, I'm on Jedi Covenant. That is a North American East Coast server. So, it's a good game. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's only not, good for Star Wars fans. It's not a good game. Oh, okay. Otherwise, it's a bad MMO. But to me, I love it. So, because it's Star Wars. It's because it's Star Wars. Uh, Apps with Marty is coming up next, but uh, it's a kind of a special edition Apps with Marty. It's not, yeah, it's not so much an app as it is an upgrade. An OS yep. upgrade. No app this week. We, I guess, we all can talk about this one. Yeah. Apps with Marty's and friends without apps. <laughs> uh, we'll be reviewing iOS seven, which was released September eighteenth. Eighteenth. Um. So yeah, if you four uh, S and up, right? If you got a phone, or four and up, four iPhone, and up. iPhone four and up, and iPad two and up. Is it two and up? Yeah, because my 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 dad oh, yeah, has right. the original right. iPad, and he cannot use it. It's iPad two and up, yeah. Yeah, and I I don't know which iPod Touch version. I believe fourth generation. Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, this is kind of a major overhaul of iOS six. Um. Right off the bat, it took. Well, I had a lot of problems downloading it first day. Most of the most of the world did. Uh, it kind of overwhelmed Apple, Apple's servers. I think this was one of their fastest upgrade uh, in, in in the iOS history. Uh, I would continually try to download it, and it just wouldn't happen. And it took me about half hour before I was able to actually get it to go. And then it took a couple hours to download. Uh, Nine hundred megabytes on your connection, yeah. On my connection, <laughs> yes. If you listen, if you frequent this podcast, you know I have a god awful internet connection. Uh, Nine hundred megabytes. Um, as soon as it uh, opens, you'll notice it's vastly different in terms of the appearance. Um, extremely colorful. Gone is the standard black and white type of deal. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of edges anymore. Everything's kind of just blank. It's very blank looking. Um, what did you guys think of it? The appearance-wise. 
Uh, I kind of want an option, I guess, to go back and forth between maybe like a classic and the uh, new modern theme because I, I don't know that the the lack of edges and the the kind of the visual overhaul isn't really what I'm looking for in an operating it's system update. It's very colorful. Yeah, it's all the all the icons are like kind of simplified, but all color. Um, but I noticed a lot of them are the colors completely gone from them. Uh, take notes, for example. Um, and the old version notes is um, designed to look like a uh, a notepad, like an actual physical like pencil and paper notepad. Now it's just white. Well, yeah, the the whole idea behind this update was kind of to get rid of the skeuomorphism, as it's called, which is like taking elements from real life and putting them on like a digital thing. Mm-hmm. So, like in Game Center, as an example, you'd have that green felt table top kind which of I idea. Totally dug. I was a fan of the skeuomorphism, um, but like, there's a war in Apple itself between yeah. people who liked it, including Steve Jobs, and the old iOS guy they fired, um, Scott Forstall. They were both for the, the skeuomorphism. Steve Jobs died, he gets fired, they they, they take away uh, all that stuff. If you're interested in what Game Center looks like now, it's colored bubbles. I actually think it's the worst looking app So yeah, of all the new ones. Because when you look at it, you don't really know what that is. It's like, what is what, what is that? Yeah, and you can click on the bubbles. They're different sizes. They're different colors. Um, and they actually have an animation when they're changing pages, which yeah. is kind of cool. But it just looks really <coughs> childish almost. Yeah, everyone everyone on like Facebook and stuff is saying like cartoony. Yeah, like all of this is pretty cartoony. But other than appearance, um, there's a couple new things. They have the um, true multitasking, I guess now. I, will, I still wouldn't call it true. It's not. It's not multitasking. It's better than it's, what it is. It it it's blown. It's blown up previews. Blown up previews. Yeah. Okay. But it. But technically, like it's, yeah. it's a lot better. You still do it the same way. You double tap, but now it's not just in the bottom, um, portion of your screen anymore. It's it's um, almost full screen, and you can swipe between them. What bugs me about it is that when you double tap, it doesn't um go out to the app you're using. It goes to a weird, different one for some reason. You yeah. Notice that. I've noticed that. It, it it goes to the next one to the right. Yeah, that bugs the crap out of me so much. Um, also, well, if no, you wait, wait, wait. But beforehand, if you were inside an app and you double clicked on it, that app wouldn't show up at all anyway. So it makes no difference. It it does now though. Yeah, it is. It is a difference. But you can now sure. close the app that you're currently on. Before you could not close it while you were yeah. in. Yeah. You'd have to go to the home screen and then be able to close it. But why does it go to the next right app? It's, I, the, it's the same idea. How can I close an app that I'm currently in? You, you can basically do it now. Yeah, you, just, you swipe up to close now instead of holding down the icon in the old OS, waiting for the X to pop up. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, never mind. Um, also, if you just swipe up on the screen, you bring up... What are they What are they calling that? This is Command Center. The Command Center. Yeah. And in your Command Center, you can adjust your brightness. It's got a little... little um. I don't Which is mo- very grateful. I'm, I'm, it's, it's one of the best features on of iOS 7. <laughs> yeah, uh, your volume's there also, and you can turn off Wi-Fi, switch to AirPlay mode, um, Bluetooth, um, uh, notifications. Also, your camera button is there if you want to use that. Yep. Um, yeah. On the iPhone, you get the flashlight. So, my thing is, with this new styling, I guess, does anyone else find it to be very... Samsung-esque? You know, that's one of the first things that people said when, when it was first announced. This was back... Uh, this was at E3, actually. It was the first day of E3. Yeah. That, that Apple had their own conference when they announced iOS 7. Everyone was like, oh, it looks like Samsung. It looks like uh, yeah. Android now. It looks like the Samsung Desire or uh, Life Companion like little thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's, it still feels Apple-ish, I guess. Yeah, it does. Um, well, it feels like the new direction Apple's going in. Not necessarily a great direction. Now, if I may say, with the download issues that Marty had, and myself as well, and all that other crap, I and the the, the wallpaper thing. Let's mention that. Let's actually. mention that. Then I'll then I'll then I'll continue. Uh, um, when I was when I upgraded it, uh, I'm a big fan of backgrounds for my for my wallpaper for my iPad, and so I have a bunch of them. And when I tried it on the iOS seven, um. It was really slow to use that feature. It had trouble um, opening up the <laughs> wallpapers page, and my pay my my image was all blown up. It was zoomed in, and I it wouldn't let me resize it, and it would freeze up for about five seconds, and I wouldn't it wouldn't let me resize. So I have to use one of the stock ones that are on, on the iPad, which I hate, because I want I want Batman. 
It's my, it's my <laughs> yeah. wallpaper. Now, we should uh, technically mention that it does it on Ryan's, too. It does it on yours, right? But ours, are, ours are both iPad 3s. Yes. Um, but I'm, I'm sure it's a glitch that will be hammered out soon. But mine does not do that. And I'm not paying You me can't either. resize the image still, though. That's correct. But I think that's a glitch. It has to be a glitch. I don't think it's a glitch because I know on a lot of tablets it does that. A lot. They want you to use a specific size. Yeah, like because it, it, it zooms it to. But be... But what do they care? Like, a, lot no, of people, be... a lot of people use their own photos. Yeah. It's because it's because you it's because when you make it landscape, it's trying to like make it perfect for both the best for po- best possible for. Yeah, both. Yeah, I understand that, but like a lot of people don't care, and they use a picture of, like their family or their their dog or something, you know. That's true. Now they got to be zoomed in. I don't think so. I, they'll fix it. Now, 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 may I say though, none of this crap would have happened if Steve Jobs was around. Well, yeah, because his attention to detail would be. He'd make sure everything was like taken care of. Like he, he would look there, at it and be like, "Download issue, get the fuck out of here." Well, uh, there was there's issues for every major Apple release, because because millions of people are trying to access this thing, you know. Okay, maybe the data traffic, but not the wallpaper thing. The wallpaper thing's a little weird, but again, I, I swear to you, it's probably just a glitch. Just wait till the next version comes out. A few other problems: the uh, the day of and a couple days after my updates weren't appearing in the app store yeah same here i think that was again with the servers being yeah um and then i had problems actually downloading them they just would not work they just stopped trying i had the same thing and my updates wouldn't go i had to delete my apps really yeah i, I just because they wouldn't do anything well uh my, mine are fine now everything's fixed um what else uh, battery issues. I'm, uh, you, you, uh, noted that your battery's draining faster now, right? Yeah, because I, I only use my iPad usually when I go to bed for maybe, like, 30 minutes or so. Yep. And I, I used to only charge it, this is, like, about, and it's new, though, but still, about once a month. It's, one, it's a really a good month. battery. Exactly. Now, I'm at 60% right now, and it was at 100 yesterday. Okay. That's pretty bad. Um, so I, I turned to the web to see what was up. Wait, wait, wait. But now, have you been using it a lot because you've been like testing out the new features of iOS 7? I've been using it a lot in the respect that I'll wake it up, use it for like two minutes, and then I'll like put it down for like three, four hours. And is that different from your average usage of your iPad? Yes, but I would expect it to go down to maybe 80. Now yeah. it's at like 60, and now like 59. It's, you know, it's it's going down pretty damn quick. I, I think a few people have mentioned that battery issues because there's a lot, of, lot, lot heavier processing going on with the new update. You got that new kind of, um, uh, sorry, multitasking. multitasking. Um, you got that background like shifting thing on the home screen where the, the background thing, yes, it kind of moves. All of all of these like little battery draining features are automatically turned on. So if you're concerned about your battery draining, um, there's a few things you can do. There's a new one I discovered. Um, what is it called here? Well, the first one with the background moving that is called. Anybody remember what that's called? The reduce motion? Reduce motion, yeah. If you want to turn off the, the weird little moment uh, movement, then reduce motion is what you want. Also, there's dynamic backgrounds. If you if you don't want your, your battery draining, turn that off as well. But there's also one called background app refresh, which is just refreshing data to keep your um your pages updated. Yeah. Um, you want to turn that off as well, or else it's just running shit in the background for all your random apps. No, I thought it did that before. To a degree, this one I think is actually like more real time. See, this is this was getting confusing now. So I know I know we were kind of making fun of the fact that they, that it's like Marty said, it's true multitasking. That's a, that's from Apple, but we were make, kind of making fun of you know the yeah. fact that it kind of isn't. But if it if it's doing well, that, it, it isn't in the way where you like like I'll take your example is that you can't watch a YouTube video in the YouTube app and then switch over to like an email to write an email and keep that video audio playing through, which you I know would so you love. can still hear it while you're typing an email. Oh, I see. I see. It can't do that. Um. Certain apps can do that, which is weird. Like, 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 I have a radio station app, and I can, I can have the radio playing in the background while I'm doing other. So stuff. I don't see why, why, like, a YouTube app couldn't program that in there so it just takes the audio and keeps continuously playing that video. See, my, the see same my thing, way. My thing with this is, is a- Apple is all about being a gated community, if you will. Yes. Then why don't they have a standard app thing? You, if you don't multitask this way, get out. They do. But we're we were just discussing how they're all different, though. Well, no, because the the one those ones are audio only, like the podcast app or like oh, a radio I app. Oh, you're saying. They're audio only, but if you're doing something like YouTube, it's just video, you know. I guess it kind of makes sense because then somebody might be like, "Oh shit," and go back and then pause it. You know what I mean? They're yeah. Like, oh, email, and they're like, "Oh, wait a sec," and then go back. But I don't know. But like, you do it on your computer, like you have YouTube playing. I'll switch to like like a new window or something and and browse the internet somewhere else while I'm listening to a video. You know. That's true. But um, it's not the biggest of deals. You know, 
That's true. I, I, I personally like things just to be standardized, but um, I also have another little complaint. I, I know it sounds like I'm complaining yeah. a lot, but it's in the music portion of the um the iPad version. Oh, it might be the iTunes version as well, but um, it was including content that I had down or I had purchased in iTunes, but is not downloaded to my iPad. It was including it on my in my playlist. Is this part of your iCloud services? Yeah, that was defaulted on, and I did not like that. Also, but uh, you could turn that off, right? Yeah, I turned that off. So. It's fine now, except for one song <laughs> that remains, and I can't delete it. So I don't know what's going to happen. And I did not download it. I don't like this artist. <laughs> it's there. It's there forever. But we'll see. Let's move on to the positives because that was a lot of just negative things about iOS yeah. 7. What, what do you guys actually like about the new operating system? Um, the command center is cool. Command Although awesome. I got iOS 7 for my iPad, but not for my phone because I'm running City on my phone. My my phone's jailbroken, and my mo or my command center on there is better. I guess so. I've I've yet to upgrade. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why, it's because I would lose my jailbreak upgrading to iOS seven. Uh, uh, per me personally, I like the update. Um, there's not much I don't like about it actually. Maybe that that game center icon I don't like. <laughs> it's bubbly. The settings icon I don't like. The icons are weird. Right? The newsstand I can't see what apps I have in my newsstand anymore. Mm. And then the folders. The folders have changed. You can have unlimited pages of folders now. Yep. So it's not limited to whatever it was. It was, like a, it was like 16 or something like that. I forget. Less than that. It couldn't be 16. And when you click on the folders, they open up to their own full page. Now, here's my problem with that, though. You, you used to be able to see more in the folder. What do you mean? So when I'm in the home screen, right, you have those little icons within your folder. Mm -hmm. So I can see what apps are in my folder. Yeah. But now they only show a certain amount number oh, okay. in there. So I can't see what apps are on the second page. Does it only show nine? Uh, Yes. Yeah. So I, can't, scroll? so I can't see what's on the second page. So if I don't know where my app is, I don't see it when I'm on the, like, the mini ones on the oh, home screen. Okay, yeah. oh, I see. So I don't know what's in there. You know? Yeah. But I, I don't know if that's a big issue with people. Uh, I, I don't use folders. I didn't even know they were folders. <laughs> I'm going to be blatantly honest. They're pretty cool. Look at that. That's pretty good. Yeah, you like that? And what do you guys think about the flat design? Everyone was, was like calling this like a flat design. There's nothing like... There's no like it doesn't um, bevel on like the images yeah. or anything. Do you guys like that kind of look? I it's like the look for the lock screen. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um There's not a lot of separation. It's all kind of together now. Yeah. It's I hard like to that. I don't know. But I think I think all the apps like complement each other nicely. The like yeah. when you're going from app to app, it looks like it's all one Yeah. Except concise. for Game Center. Except for Game Center. Looks like it's all one built, designed. And this is all from Johnny Ive, who was previously a hardware um, guy at Apple. He only designed the hardware. They brought him over to software for the first time. So that's cool. Um, but So would you guys recommend this, or what's your opinion? I personally wouldn't upgrade for my jailbreak, if that is if that, oh. <laughs> that applies. No, someone who actually uses Apple products, but how they're supposed to be used. I don't mind that I upgraded my iPad, though. I like it. My favorite feature is that you don't have to um, go to the bottom of the screen to unlock it anymore. Yeah. You can just unlock from any part of the screen, which is badass. Yeah. Um, other than visually, though, I don't feel like it's a huge upgrade. It does feel like a new device, though, right? Don't you think? If, uh, yeah, I'm using it differently. Mm -hmm. um, I'm using gestures more. Um, yeah, so Matt, would you, no, but you, would you recommend this to people looking to upgrade? I'm definitely a noob at... Apple products. Um, <laughs> I would say if you really like the old aesthetics, then do not. Okay. If you like the new functionality that we said, then then you don't really care, and you just like a person that just likes to like their stuff to work. Yeah. Then there's nothing really wrong with it. Because I think the way they designed it is like nothing in it really. You're familiar with how everything works still, right? Yeah. So you're you're already you already know how to use this OS. It just looks different, really. My my, my thing is though is. It, my, I realize like Apple's a gated community, so all their devices will look the same, etc. But my thing is, is on other platforms and whatever, you can change the look for fun, and just for according to your opinion. But like, we've talked so much about aesthetics. I don't know whether it warranted a full new OS. If you know what I mean. Well, a lot of people have been complaining that like the the general look of iOS has not changed since the original iPhone. It's true. If you pick up an original iPhone, it looks exactly like iOS 6 kind of did. 
There's just more features in iOS 6, but yeah. visually it looked the same. Hardly any of the apps had ever changed their icon design, and um, it's, we've just been living with the same like looking phone for like since like 2007. You know. Well, my my thing is like that. That's fine, but they could have did like a 6.2 or something. In my opinion, just because like I mean like to me a new OS should technically be a whole new thing. That that's just me, or like a like a pretty big jump. Like like wi- like for example like Windows ninety five to Windows ninety eight looks the same but there's like a lot of crap. In but there. but Apple does uh, they don't want to alienate their their base they don't want to say here's something new you have to learn it now go I, go learn it you know that's kind of hard for especially Apple has actually a lot of um, older uh, people who use their products they don't want to freak them out too bad. I'm thinking maybe that that's why all the platforms kind of thrive all yeah. of them because yeah. like I mean there's different people with different opinions on it right. As an old person changing over from six to seven though I'd feel pretty out of place <laughs> it's it it feels a lot different as soon as you open it you're like whoa this is foreign looking yeah it feels foreign looking where well, is everything well i just have to say to close this out that when, when it was first announced i hated it i was like man it looks like do so. i want this on my phone yeah now that i have it it's i like it it's so i'm colorful. glad i'm happy anyway let's move on to some video game news here over to microsoft from apple to microsoft look at that uh xbone the infamous name given to the Xbox One console. I, I like calling it the Xbone now. <laughs> I like that name. <laughs> so yeah, Microsoft has actually acquired the domain for Xbone.com. Um, and this is after the um, Xbox Live programming director, Larry Major Nelson Herb, Nelson. said that Major the nickname Nelson. Xbone disrespects the developers of the console who, who have spent all this hard work making the console. Coming from Major Nelson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't think it's a negative thing. It's just kind of like a little nickname. Yeah, we're not saying it like I'm not going to buy it because it's called the X Bone. No. What is what the stupid developers and they're we're not insulting the developers. It it's sounds just, better than Xbox One. It could be like the most highly regarded developers in the world, and if they came up with Xbox One, we'd still call it the X Bone. You know? Yeah. It, it sounds. I I kind of agree with Major Nelson. Actually, I I, I find it. Oh, it almost sounds insulting. Do you think it's insulting? I think it sounds insulting. I, I really do. It's like a short nickname. It's like a short nickname, but I mean, like, I don't know. It just seems like some, like it, it just kind of feels like something would be like, oh, the stupid X bone. I don't know. It just seems like kind of a like a like a lowly. But name I think I think that name would would be said by both people who like the Xbox and people who kind of hate it. Like some like someone who's like a funny person would say, oh, it's an X bone. You know, it's just something they do. That's true. I don't know. I like it. Are, did they buy it just so no one else can get it? Probably. We should have bought it. Because someone could make like some like like harassment site and that just <laughs> beats down the <laughs> Xbox. I wish we did it. Anyway, let's move on to Sony. They've announced a new version of PlayStation Vita. Now, this is a little bit older news, but uh, we were gone last week. So we just want to catch you guys up on it in case you don't know. Um, do you think the new Vita will actually... like? make it worth buying um let me just give you the details on this it's a new model available in six colors 20 percent thinner 15 percent lighter a larger battery um and, and um what else Includes oh built-in memory card built-in Dif- memory card and it has a lcd L- display lcd not the oled one i do not like this thing oh you don't like it i do not like this th- one reason is because the Vita screen is fucking awesome. Yeah, it is, yep. It is uh, a actually, really everyone, nice uh, screen. Everyone on IGN said that too. Mm-hmm. And I know this is going to be a downgrade. I know it's going to look like crap. They already said it is because the OLED actually has deeper blacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and the LCD does not do blacks very well. So that's that's my one big complaint against it. And one gigabyte of storage is kind of weak. On, on board storage though. Kind, c- yeah, and compared to zero storage that you get with, <laughs> with the other Vita, but still. How much is this thing? Uh, what, what, what are the price comparisons? Oh, it was what was it? Like it's only in Japan. I should mention that now. Yeah, yeah. there's no price here yet. There's no word that is it's coming to the West, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's ten bucks cheaper. It's one ninety if you convert the yen, but it would probably sell for two hundred here. Isn't the new v, isn't the Vita price, price drop. drop to two hundred? Yeah. It's probably just it's probably just like a new thing for the for the Japanese right now, because like that all Sony stuff sells pretty well there. Yeah, definitely. So what's the point of this thing? To sell in Japan. It's cheaper, it's thinner, it's a new product. But it's wider, though. Did you see the Xbox, the IGN video? It looks wider. I think they said it's not, though. It's a weird optical illusion, I think. Maybe it's just because it's white. 
Well, there's a black one too. They have black. Oh, one there's too. black ones. Yeah. Oh. But there's there's subtle changes. It's like it looks a little taller to me. Yeah, yeah. And they even move the PS Vita logo up on top of the screen instead of to the left, something like that. And it's really weird. Well, but. the thing is too is I this might actually drive some Vita sales because I saw a lot of people on IGN. Like the like in the comment section saying like this like this look, this looks like a bunch of piece of crap better go buy a Vita now before they they force oh, yeah. us to use it yeah. uh, and and I also mentioned before with I don't know whether I mentioned it on the show but when I first got a Vita I I found that the the width was good like it was a it was a because because like you're reaching to grab that touchpad mm-hmm. so it's a good like because I know like if I, like if it's too thin you're gonna you're kind of like finicky with it but if you're trying to reach you're gonna end up dropping the thing yeah but it's, it was a good it was a good like shape I don't know. People keep saying it's like, oh, we gotta get thinner to fit in our pockets and stuff. I, I don't. It's still too big to go <laughs> jacket pocket. Maybe. Some people bring it in their pocket, but at the same time, I don't really want to break the analog sticks. I'm afraid of that. Mm-hmm. I wish that you could just like push those in and hide them. And you have that giant That'd screen cool. there too. I know the it, open giant screen. I just use my like the the shell because, in my opinion, like a lot of people don't really like game at the bus stop unless mm-hmm. it's on their phone. They yeah. will they'll yeah. bring that along with them if they're sitting on the train and they'll have a backpack with a, with a case. Yeah, I think most people either on super long trips they'll bring their Vita or they're played at home. I don't think it's like a mobile device. Their hydro goes out. <laughs> yeah, play the Vita. That's not a bad idea. Why yeah. don't I think of that? But I think the the bigger announcement. Um, this was at what, T- TGS or is that going on right now? TGS is going on now. This was what Gamescom. Was, this was at Gamescom. I think so. Wasn't that a long time ago? I don't know. I'm going to say anyway. Uh, the bigger announcement was the PlayStation Vita TV. Um, this was basically a Vita. That will stream um, Vita games, right? It'll stream Vita games uh, and PS4 games. And PS4 games from your PS4. Pretty interesting concept. Let me, uh, I can explain it better. Hang on, just give me a second, because I'm I'm confusing myself here. But the it's basically like a tiny thin Vita without a screen, and then it, it looks can, like an Apple TV. It's an Apple TV for your Vita. Yeah, but you can pl- you can plug in like Vita games, a Vita memory card. You can play with a DualShock Three. And play on your HD TV. It's HDMI. Yeah. Okay, for, only okay, for supported so, games. So just for clarification, it's just it's like a little mini Vita console on my that sits on my sits on my desk. It's whatever. about the size of a deck of cards. And I if I want to play Killzone, yeah. I can just grab my Vita Vita cartridge, pop it in the the Vita TV, mm-hmm. grab my whatever controller. DualShock Three. DualShock Three. DualShock only. Okay, whatever. DualShock Three, and then I can just play my Vita game on there. Correct. And there's memory card slot there too. Yep. It has like a gig onboard storage. And I can. Well, that's pretty good. And then I can like take that out and put it in the the Vita if I want. Yeah. Now, but the cooler thing is you can stream your PlayStation Four to it. Now I'm confused about this. So is this is this the sort of deal where, if say for example we like everyone lives in a house, the PS Four is in the main room. I have a bedroom. I normally want to play in the bed the main room, but say for example everyone's using it. I go up to my bedroom. No one's using the PS Four. I can turn on the PS Four and it'll stream the TV upstairs. Correct. Precisely. That's pretty good. That's exactly the cool, what the you cool thing about it. this is, like, say you have like a bunch of TVs and, and a bunch of rooms, you can stream your PS4 everywhere you want. So is it multiple streaming? Or is it like one to one? It'd be one to one, but you can buy like two and then stream it to that one, and then stream it to the other one if you want to do that. You know? Wait, wait no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. So, so if I'm you had confused. two Vita TVs and one PS4, is that what you're saying? You, yeah, you can't stream simultaneously to both. Oh, but I you see, can stream okay. it to one in one room, and then say you're in the other room on another day, you can stream it to that one. I, I, th- I thought you meant like. Buy multiple PS4s. I'm like, why are we doing this now? Why, why <laughs> no, are we no. streaming? Now this is only in um, in Japan as well, and no word of it is coming to the US. But I think this will. It has to. That yeah. This yeah. seems pretty well received. Yeah. Now the thing is though, the touchscreen stuff. Well, yeah, that's why it's only for supported games, and the the games that are available to play on on launch, I guess, will be Rayman Origins. Uh, excuse me if I'm pronouncing this wrong. I don't know too much about this game, but Lumines, Lumines, Luminous, Luminous. Okay. And Motorstorm RC. There's an RC Motorstorm. Yeah, it was on. It was on the PlayStation Network. Cool. Yeah. Um, hundred bucks, right? Hundred bucks. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. Sounds like a cheap way to play Vita games. And you can stream uh, Hulu Plus. Uh, no word of Netflix, I don't think yet, but that will probably definitely be on there. No, wait a sec though. I've, uh, now I have a question. So I, I, I can stream my PS4. That's fine. Can I stream my Vita? And then it with it with with that being said, yeah, can you can I use, stream your Vita. Can yeah. I use my Vita on the Vita TV to stream the game, and can also use the games that aren't technically supported because it, the Vita itself has a touchscreen, obviously. Yep, I think so. I'm you not. can stream your Vita. See, that's damn good. That's what I want to do because I want to play Killzone on the big screen. 
You can't do that with a controller. Can I do that right now, actually? No. I can't do that right now, and I want to. <laughs> It's good stuff. But another issue would have to it had to be supported again because you know we don't want to take that tiny resolution and blow it up on your forty inch TV. Yeah, I but want to is, see what that looks like. First. It is technically it is te- technically ten eighty p. Why? Is the video screen is ten eighty p? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, is it's it? not. No, it's seven twenty p. Then I don't know the exact dimensions, but I know it's not ten eighty. Are you sure? I, 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 I I'm swore pretty it sure was. it's less than seven twenty two. Because are like like phones is over ten eighty p. Yeah, but those are those are like Retina displays or Super AMOLED if you want to go. Not Apple on me. That's true. Well, okay, come on. <laughs> I guarantee you they're going to start making all of these games support it for just DualShock 3 controls mm-hmm. just so they can push this Vita TV, which I would actually do just if I wanted if I wanted to play Vita games. Yeah. I would just go for the TV instead of buying an actual Vita. I'm I'm worried. I'm worried that since it's not like the PlayStation 4 where they're forcing you to use the remote play that this this will die off. Wait, you, what do you want to die off? No, I'm saying I'm I'm afraid. Like you know how like remote play on PS2 or rather, sorry, PSP with the PS3, yeah, and stuff like that. That died off because it's not mandatory. I'm afraid that developers won't develop just for the TV. They'll just keep developing for the Vita, and then they'll be like, oh well, you know, it's just not compatible, whatever. And it's just gonna be these few games, and it'll die off. That's possible, but what I've been hearing is people are mostly excited about streaming the PS4. That's true. If it, not so much the Vita, no one really cares about the Vita. So if it streams is. Netflix, that that's a good little that's a good little box. That's a very good that's a very good like little. It's an Apple TV essentially. Essentially, the Apple TV can do a little more, but but essentially, if, you, if you're not an Apple person, well, if if you just want to play games, I mean, that's yeah. perfect. Yep. Um, as for the screen, I I, I looked it up. It is nine sixty by five forty four. There you go. It's nine. It's a five forty four p display. So if you stretch it up to twice its size, ooh, but it won't it won't stretch it. It'll it'll upscale it, right? If if that's how it works, I'm sure the cartridge should would be able to do it, right? Well, it's what, it's what Apple does with like um, iPhone apps on the iPad. It just doubles the pixels. You and know, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look, it doesn't good, look good, but it's, it's you can see it. You know, it's not blurry or anything. Then again, we have the like games on the Xbox being Xbox One being upscaled. So yeah. upscaling technology has kind of gone up, you know. Yeah. So, okay, let's move on to more Sony news. PlayStation Four noticeably faster than the Xbox One. This is a report from some developers. Um, so up up to fifty percent faster in in their tests. Do you guys think this is a, a selling point or? No. Nope. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say no. Um, cause at the end of the day. They're always ports of the other versions, like a yeah. lot, like in the early days of the 360 and PS3. All the PS3 games are just ports of games that they developed for the 360. Mm-hmm. So they're not. I'm, I don't think they're going to be. This is going to be noticeable. It's it's up to the developers and up to exclusives. Like yeah, because I don't I don't think developers are going to want to code two different versions. Yeah. They'll, they'll code it for the lesser version, and then it will run on the PS4 because it's faster. You know. It'll, it's, yeah, and le- unless unless we're talking exclusives, this doesn't really matter. See, now that's where I'm uh, that's where I'm getting excited because it's the exclusives that can really harness the full power of of these consoles, you know. That's true. With Uncharted, with its, its like extraordinary visuals, or or um, Last of Us, you know. Sony games. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's the, plus they have all the backing from Sony. Sony's the one who made these things. They can send all the engineers they they want to help better pull the power out of these consoles, you know. Well, the the thing is too is I, I um we discussed maybe a few weeks ago that the the hardware between the two consoles is like pretty much identical, like pr- not exactly the same. Xbox One's a little bit less powerful, mm. but not really noticeably so. But I, I started thinking about this: is it possible it's because of the three operating systems or three kernels or whatever it is on the Xbox One? That's the possibility, actually. Because it's starting to run this, it's trying to run this, open Skype, open this, open that, and yep. it's always checking. Am I getting a Skype call? Am I getting a Skype call while it's trying to stream a game and upscale too? And it's freaking out. And then you, you know got your, your your satellite box or cable box running into cable it. Cable box running into it, and it's trying to check to make sure, and then it yep. connects, it's always listening, yep. and all that crap. Like, I'm not surprised by this because um, Sony actually went to the developers, right? Yeah. When actually um, designing the PS4. Yeah. So it was designed to be a developer box. Yeah. yeah, a developer box essentially. So it's it's not surprising. You know, I'm actually surpri- surprised that um Microsoft didn't do the same thing. They kind of just did their own thing like like usual. Like they always do. Yeah. They shit the bed. 
I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have I, to get our hands on these I'm things. Well, they excited. shit the bed until they, they, they did the 180. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'm, I, I am very excited to, to, to say Xbox on for the first time. And the last uh, time. But. Let me turn that off. We got a story coming up about Sony and their voice commands and stuff. So. Stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, PS3 to PS4 upgrade offer has been detailed. Uh, so gamers can upgrade from current gen versions of Call of Duty, Ghosts, Watch Dogs, Battlefield 4, and Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. It's next gen versions for $10 for a limited time. We covered this. Yeah, but this is actually the games that will support oh, okay. it. Um, and they've now officially said $10. Because before they said, like, the Blacklist was like, or uh, Ghost, sorry, was like, um, yeah, this is um, 10 bucks, right? Mm. Other games well, might be different, but, but Call of Duty was 10 bucks. So now all these great games are $10. So you so you have a 360 version of Ghosts. You pay ten bucks, you get a X Bone version. <laughs> yes, okay. X Bone version. Y- yeah, yeah. You have to hand in the other one though. Uh, no. No, no, no. I don't think so. I, I think that's how it works. I thought it was a, thought it was a trade in. They resell it, and then you give them ten dollars. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And then they give you the Xbox One version. Oh really? Yeah. Because I don't think they're gonna be like eh, ten bucks, whatever. I don't think they're gonna do that. Oh. Because okay. I would just take that and go to GameStop and get. 40 bucks for it that, that that is correct that's what i would do huh so it's it's uh, you're paying ten dollars plus reselling your game you sure about that i can't imagine it's the other way Cause, cause since it's GameStop, no because you've already purchased it no yeah exactly so so i okay so um i yeah. buy i buy call of duty ghost on 360 i play it for three weeks or whatever xbox one comes out I go to the store, I buy my Xbox One, and then whatever, and then I want Call of Duty Ghosts on there. So I go there, I give them my 360 yeah. version, I again give them $10, they give me the Xbox One version. Uh, I guess you could just trade it in, right? Yeah. You'd have extra store credit. Yeah. Okay, so my mistake. Um, so yeah, now the PS4 voice gesture, voice and gesture controls have been confirmed. Um, so the next generation console's camera the, for the PS4 doesn't ship with the PS4. So it's not going to be used. So it's not going to be used, but... It will support both voice and gesture control, and this was confirmed at the Tokyo Game Show uh, this week. I I actually want the Xbox One and PS4 just because I kind of want one to have voice control and one not to. Like I, I don't know. Well, it, you're it, not. You're obviously not going to get the camera for the PS4. I'm not the getting the camera for PS4, but I wouldn't buy the camera for Xbox if it was separate. Yeah. Adriano was 100 percent correct when saying that. You need to ship it. Yeah, it feels. I don't know anything about it, but it already feels tacked on because mm-hmm. they didn't mention it at E three whatsoever. Yeah, and it's just they, they they're going back and forth with this. Sony will say they have something a week later. Microsoft will say they have it, and now Sony's mentioning their their voice control and what the, what the hell are the gestures going to do? Like just swiping between. I think so. Yeah. Well, see, my oh, my thing stupid. is is how I don't, like I've never actually used the original connector or whatever, but. How accurate is that? Like, I I have terrible. It was okay. Like, it, it, so like, because I don't want to be like, move my hand over and oh, oh, it went too far. Oh, oh, accidentally <laughs> went into this. Oh, making a Skype call. And, and while and, while you did all that, you could have went and grabbed your controller. Yep. It's just. But but the connect the connect two point is supposed to be a signif- significant. That's what, better. Yeah, they said yeah. significant improvement. I don't know where the heck I'm gonna put it. People with surround sound systems, beware. If you have that center speaker for <laughs> That's right. for voice, I already have a Wii motion bar on top of that. I should just, I'm gonna have like a stack of cameras, <laughs> and I won't be able to see my television. You need a shelf. I'm gonna have to buy one of those shelves to hang off my TV. Okay, so at, at Gamescom, um, Sony announced that it had a million pre-orders. That's damn good. So that's basically day one. When the console launches, they sell a million consoles. Probably essentially. two. Probably two, because how many people are like, ah, oh, fuck pre-order? Well, well, they're they're holding back um, stock though, so that people can actually walk in and buy. Don't know. So wait, the that. launch happens, right? Yeah. Say for like let's say two or three days, right? Yeah. Let's even say a week. Let the launch is like a launch week, okay? Okay. Um, they've held back stock. They ship it out. Boom! There's new fresh supply of PlayStation's oh, okay. on the, in the store. So everyone who goes running out um, now can go pick one up. And they don't have to wait like 10 months to actually get their hands on one. Okay, well, Interesting. What, what, I, need, I need another explanation. So on launch day, only pre-orders? That's what Nintendo did. It's exactly what Nintendo For did. For Wii U? Yeah. Because remember we went into Walmart and they're like, oh, we only, we only ordered pre-ordered ones. If you didn't pre-order, you know, you're out of luck. Yeah. I'm like, well, what's that one back there, sir? Yeah, that's pre-ordered. And so. Yeah, I should have stole it. <laughs> 
So so and then when will they release the stock? I'm sorry. They, they didn't announce when they're going to release the 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 held back stock. But oh okay. I'm I just I'm just using day. a week as an example. But it'll probably be like the next couple of days. That's pretty smart. Yeah, because then you don't have to like everyone's killing each other just to get the first ones before everything sold out for the next month. No, I I don't I don't know if the, I don't know how they how they market things like this, but I I think they need to have game market like just like game marketing for example for the kids or whatever but for the for to make sure that the the parents know they should they need to go on there and say the company should say you need to pre-order this on like parents channel if you will like like tv channels that they'd watch like ctv and whatever because that way the the consoles will be pre-ordered by the parents because the because the parents are not stupid if they see playstation 4 and the kid keeps saying he wants playstation and the, and it says pre-order now or you will not get it They'll make a lot more. Well, they don't want to say that. That sounds kind of hard. Well, no, but I mean, like, like make it more of just be like, be like, happens though. Yeah, to guarantee your copy before Christmas for your kid or something. Like, just you know what I mean. They don't need a kid advertisement. Yeah. And then that way it would it would just be a lot easier than this. Oh, now we're sold out and yada yada. They know how much they need. They make it done. You know what I mean? Well, I think what this what this probably will do is like if you go to the store day one and don't have a pre order and they say oh we're out of pre orders they can probably say well we have another shipment coming in. Next week, instead of what they normally say for every other day one launch I've gone to, we don't know when we're getting any more in. That's true. Now they'll have might have a definitive date. Oh, we're getting like fifteen in uh, next next uh, Tuesday or something. And they're all pre-ordered. <laughs> well, I don't know, but <laughs> well, I, I I don't know about like I don't know about your maybe your parents or whatever, but but my parents are very, or at least back in the day, still uh, were very lazy with grabbing things like. They, they, my parents would always be like, oh, well, uh, for example, I don't know, but just for example, like, oh, the Xbox is out today, so let's wait till next week to go pick it up. No, well, that's not going to work. You need <laughs> to buy it today or you're not going to get it. Well, why? Because everyone's going to buy it. Oh, if that's the case, I'm not going. It's going to be busy. Well, like, Christ. <laughs> Sound logic to me. That's stupid. But anyway, <laughs> to get back to the story, Sony's saying that they're aiming to sell 5 million PS4 consoles before March of 2014. So I think um, I think they're really working on their their release strategy for this thing. I'm, I'm, I think they're going to shell fucking shit done. I think so. I think so. Is uh, it possible, Marty? I will wait and see because I'm I I still think a lot of people are unsure which one they're going to choose. Like um, a lot of people are only going to be able to afford one of them for yeah. a while, and I don't know. Well, I, I'm going to have to wait and see. They they're they're launching within a week of each other, aren't they? Yeah. So, but if you think about it now, though, that's um, nine hundred bucks if you want both. I know, but but I was, what I was about to say though is plus games. Back in the day, w- with the launch days, they were like seven hundred bucks. Yep. For both, for one. Yeah, the so, PS the PS3 was like seven hundred bucks. Buying both is actually more viable. Like to me, like I like um I actually watched the um IGN thing with I think Greg Miller. It might be the man that I think is Greg <laughs> Miller as well. I don't know. I don't. But anyway, he was saying that um. He he couldn't justify he he wanted to cancel his pre order for Xbox. That was Greg Miller. That was okay. That was actually Greg Miller. Okay, he wanted to cancel his pre order for Xbox, but at the same time, the other guy said, "Well, will you be holding out for like uh, a price drop?" Well, no. So you might as well buy it now. Like, Who the hell cares? Mm. You know what I mean? So I I kind of in agreement with that. Like I'm I'm probably gonna like maybe put aside like twelve hundred bucks, and then that'll cover my games and all my everything. I'm not gonna buy two games for each one. I'm not gonna buy like ten games. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Let's move on to some Nintendo news. Um, the 3DS has outsold the Xbox 360 and the PS3 in August. And that's not so surprising because the new generation of consoles coming out, people aren't buying the current gen, right? And the 3DS is still like a kind of a newer console. Newer it's handheld. portable though too. It, it's, it's a little, it's a little bit surprising since the 2DS is on the way as well. That's true. That's a good point. That's like right around the corner. But right? I don't. I don't. They haven't done much marketing for it. That, that unless, is, unless you're a hardcore gamer, you don't really know about it. Yeah. But let me just read this here. Um, Nintendo's portable outsells home consoles for Microsoft and Sony in the U.S. Uh, for August. Software sales post first gain since November 2011. Well, that's that's good. 3DS, yeah. And overall in the U.S., hardware sales are down 40%. Uh, for the 3DS? Uh, for consoles. Oh. Well, that makes sense. I mean, no again, one, the same thing. It's the end, of the, buy a end of the generation. Right yeah. Uh, they're probably cheap. What? Uh, like a PS3 right now. Do you think we'll see another price drop right before? Or no? I mean, it's only two months away. I, I, I can see I can see maybe not a price drop, but I could see like a holiday bundle come out by via retailers. I can't see that. So like, no, because like Future Shaw might be like, okay, let's just get rid of our stock of PS3s, then we might get like a little shipment in later. 
So let's get rid of it. Well, let's throw in a game. Both consoles are still gaming, going to be supported after the next gen launches, right? That, that's so. true, but it's also like I mean, it's the same with phones though. How how much do phones go down when the next one comes out? But the phones still they go down right away. That's a yeah. different market though. It, that's it, a heavily different market. It, okay, that that that's true. But even games, even usually, mm-hmm. like Call of Duty, there's a prime example. Call of Duty is like dead. Call of Duty One is still twenty bucks. Can you believe that? Call of Duty Four, you mean? No, the, no, like uh, the, the first one, isn't it? It's good. well, if if it is, it's fantastic. But also, yeah, Call of Duty Four is twenty bucks. All their all their old games are twenty dollars. That that's fair. I I think that's fair. It's fair. That's crazy. Twenty dollars, I think. Those fair. games are so old. I I still think it's fair. Ten bucks. They're still Call of Duty Four is still the best in like a long time. No, Call of Duty Two. Uh, four. That's the best Call of Duty. Period. Four. That's the end game. Uh, all right. But the GTA Five bundle just co- did just come out for the PlayStation Three. What new, new bundle? True. Yeah, um, we saw them and we went. Yeah. Is it the new Slim? Yes. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but like, am I opening like a like a refrigerator door? <laughs> like, what the heck am I doing? In more Nintendo news, Wii Sports is getting an HD update for Wii U. Man, they're just they're just striving to find something on this console. I'm I'm they're sorry. They're bringing back this... their best-selling game from the I was, Wii. I, I was I was interested in this until you until. We we went further into the story. Yeah, the, the, the instant I saw this pricing model, yeah, go, let me just go explain ahead. Do it up. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry, do it up. Those who download Wii Sports Club, as it's called, will be given a trial pass. <laughs> and I don't is, like this club word. <laughs> that's all. And Nintendo's all about the club. And then man. Drive Club's coming out. I oh. hate that. <laughs> it's free though. Get rid of the word club. This allows um, the the people who purchase this to play any available game for a 24 hour period. After this period ends, players can either purchase a day pass for two dollars or trade in their Wii U. To play all available sports for another 24-hour period. That's so freaking weird. Or they can buy a permanent access to individual sports for ten dollars each. Now, may, may I add this? I'm pretty. I, I watched a, a brief video on this, and I'm pretty sure this is correct. That these sports games are Wii Sports. Exactly. That's it. They are Wii Sports, but they're now multiplayer and, online. And they're HD. They're okay. They're HD. <laughs> that's true. But at so the that same takes some work. So at the same time, online is pretty cool. Ten dollars for bowling, ten dollars for tennis for a game that was free with the with the console back in the day. You could still what, play what on your. Again? What were the games on there? We uh, we tennis, we tennis, bowling, bowling, golf, golf boxing. Uh, that was it. No nope. sword shooting. Was that was nope. that the first nope. one? Or that, that was that was resort. That's it. I think four. That's bowling, four. tennis, golf, boxing, That's baseball. It. Shit. There baseball. Was, there was baseball. And that was it. Yeah, there's no case for Wii Sports. No one's buying baseball. Uh, I, the baseball was the, pretty good. That was pretty fun. It was pretty damn good. Can we play Wii Sports after this? No, we're not, I'm not doing that. I'm not playing Wii. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll just play Wii Sports by myself. Then. Play with your iPad. Mm. <laughs> and the $2 trial for 20 or, or day pass? That's so what weird. Throw, that? throw it in a hotel. Charge people for that. <laughs> there you go. Like the good old days. Yeah. Good old... What was it? Uh, no, don't even say it was the Super Nintendo because it wasn't... What was it? It was just like a weird crappy controller and you played like games that were built onto the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Every time I went to a hotel, I wanted to play that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't worth it, trust me. It was. Mm. I played uh, mm. I played uh, Super Mario World. Brought, brought my own like N64. <laughs> Uh, and some weird news, Xbox One's Rise, Son of Rome, is going to be run at 900p. <laughs> Glorious 900p. What the Actually, that's what I run SimCity in on my on my, on my Mac version, because <laughs> there's no 1080p on my Mac version. Well, like, what did they develop it for, the <laughs> PC? Like, what, what the heck happened? Is it true what you told me about the, the sped up E3 demo? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. the combat was sped up? Yeah, if, if you watch the E3 demo of Rise, Son of Rome, at E3... They sped it up because it, the battle is going on longer than that. Like like your combat with a dude. It's not just a couple quick time events. You're actually like fighting for a, a bit longer than that. Really? You're fi- yeah, you're, you're fighting with, with a variety of quick time events. Yeah. Optional. I'm sorry, but if something says press X, I'm going to be like, oh crap, X. Like I'm just going to instinctually mm-hmm. press X. Yeah. I don't know. Whoever thought that was a good idea. It's probably not going to sell well at all. It, and, it, and they, it's a disaster. Microsoft really wants this to be like the next Gears or something like that. You, do you think Crimson Dragon's going to sell well? Doesn't have any sound in it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's already out for PC. <laughs> Is it seriously? Yep. Okay. Well, 
Anyway, uh, Rise will be up upscaled to 1080p, like all games on the Xbox One. Wait, so none of them not, can can any of them be 1080p or just... Forza is 1080p, 60 frames. God oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> I thought the devs were. I thought that Microsoft's like to the devs. No, you can't make 1080p games. Well, upscale. I'm really disappointed that they can't make them 1080. A lot of upscale. We have these on. new consoles. Well, I'm pretty sure they can. I'm just pretty sure that Rise is a fail. No, no, but <laughs> like other other developers are saying our next gen console games are going to be 720. Because and I'm like, why? They're doing the human thing. Oh well, we could code an engine, but we'll make 10 billion dollars. And if we code an engine, we'll make 10 billion dollars. Okay, old engine. Ten billion dollars. We don't have to make a new engine. <laughs> Does that go for all developers? Well, some will do 1080. Like like Call of Duty's always been 1080, 60 frames. Forza will because it because it's a Microsoft gra- game. Graphics. <laughs> yeah. So like there, there are 1080 games out there. This last gen, they said oh it's HD, but most games were 720. Which, which is 5. which is HD, but yeah. these new consoles should be able to do 1080. We. In my opinion, we should we we, start, we need to start hitting the 1080 mark because 4K exists. Yeah, but how come on how come on, on on PC version of games I can get my my screen resolution at 2560 by 1440? Because the PC PCs will upscale. But why can't I do that on on a console? Why can't I get a 1080 one? No, but you just said that the Xbox One is is 1080ing or is upscaling to 1080. Yeah. That's fine. I, I I don't know for sure, but I guarantee these games are probably coded for 10, 1080p, and then the there's like the operating system is is upscaling. I don't like that. Anyway, we'll move on. A study has found that children are gaming nearly uh, as much as they do game on. Oh, sorry, children are gaming on on mobile as much as they are on consoles. This is kids between twelve and seventeen, oh, I believe. That, that that that's fine though. Think about this though. That's not fun. No, but no, but it, it, it's <laughs> fine. It's fine because we we I think we've discussed this before with the, like, is mobile gaming a platform and all that crap? Where it's because like say for example they're on like they go out for the weekend they come home they're on their PlayStation then their parents want to go out somewhere so while the parents are driving them there for two hours they are playing a game they're playing a game on the mobile on the mobile phone when they're driving back for two hours then they get home for an hour and they play on their console again. <laughs> they consider that game time. Go I, outside. They do, they do. No, but that's what I mean, though. But like, <laughs> there's a lot of driving and stuff like that involved. Yeah, but kids don't play for an hour or two hours. They'll sit at their console for like four, that's four true. or five, and then they're mobile. They're they're playing mobile games for another four or five hours. That's ten hours. Now, actually, I have a question here. And if you had a kid, would you have a problem with him oh, sitting God. playing video games all day? Well, because I'm a gamer, no. No, I'd be sitting next to him. Because my thing is, I'd be as long, playing. as, long he, he as he's be. doing, like, he has to do his school shit, obviously. But as long as he's doing his school stuff, I don't care what he does. Yeah. I hate the parents that are like, like, whatever, everyone has their opinions. But in my opinion, I, I don't like it when it's like, oh, do your schoolwork, but don't put, don't go on the computer. But don't do this, but do your schoolwork. Well, what the fuck can I do then? You know what I mean? <laughs> what, are you, what are you supposed to do otherwise? Or? Like, my, my, no, my thing is, is, is if he does, does his schoolwork, let him do what he wants. Because whatever, who cares? He, the... the the consoles are social. They're always worried about the kids being social. Just play online. Who cares? Don't worry about it. <laughs> so the um yeah the children ages twelve to seventeen, uh who were found spending an average of seven hours a week on mobile devices compared to five hours a week in twenty eleven. So it's gone from five hours a week. That's it. To seven hours a week. Two extra hours they're they're spending on mobile games. It could be the iPod revolution, as I call it. A lot of people just buy their kids iPods now, and they just play on the, play on the iPod, right? On, 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 honest to God, like I, if, if if your kid's really young, like I'm going to say three and up, buy him an iPod, throw it in an honor box because it won't break, and he has unlimited free games. What was the first... How old were you guys when you had your first gaming device? I was in grade five. So what age is that? What is that? I don't really know. It's, that's um, great. Seven? Kind, kindergarten, you're five. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> we yeah, we, yeah, we can do right. this. Hang on. You you were in grade five when you. I was st- in grade five. I started with PS2, and it was it was end good of life. Good luck. I started earlier than you, Matt. So you were ten. I started maybe like a year before that, so maybe nine, because I had a G- I Game Boy Advance. You were ten then. Uh, oh wait, okay. Actually, hold the phone here. I'm sorry. Does a PC count? Let's, well, yeah. Let's say yes. <laughs> okay, grade two then. <laughs> PC gaming at grade two. <laughs> well, yeah, we yeah, played like I, a yeah, little. Yeah, I, I oh, love. What was the, the the truck one called? Oh, Tonka! I was about to say Tonka truck. The Tonka one was awesome. <laughs> no, the the one where you would uh, you were a trucker. 
Oh, Cross Canada. Cross like Canada. something like that. Cross yeah. Country Canada. Cross yeah. Country, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was so good. <laughs> I played that a lot. I think I have the disc somewhere upstairs. I want to play that. I have that. Yeah, I have, I oh, my disc. God. Did you have the one that came with the map? Uh, I had. I have one. That I, I have the platinum one. Oh. So you, 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 can, you actually move your head around and you click like the gas pedal to go. Oh. It's pretty damn good. I have to tell you about this game that I used to play on the Mac. You would drive around in a truck, right? right. It was it was like it was just like a uh, basically on on the screen you had just a road, right? And there was like the shoulders of the road, okay? And you'd be in a truck in the middle of the road, and you're kind of like, it's like a top down thing, okay? Okay. The truck is continuously driving. You're in the back of the truck. It's a pickup truck, and and little Bill Gates comes running down <laughs> on the shoulder of the road, okay? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Little Bill Gates. And you would take a raspberry blue iMac. <laughs> and you would throw it out and squish him with it. <laughs> squish, squish, Bill Gates. What the heck? I don't know what the game is called. Um, if you can find it, uh, that'd be so- awesome. That sounds great. But yeah, that's what I played. That's damn. That's <laughs> damn funny. But let's let's say what, what was your earliest um like mine actual person- game console? Mine personally, or not like- a PC. Let's say that not a PC. Then yeah. that's Grid Five PS2. PS2, and you said you had a Game Boy Advance when? Uh, Game Boy Advance one year before. I don't know whether you consider that like a real big. Uh, okay. Um, like for me personally, or like say like my brothers or no, my no, family you, had you a personally. console. But did you? Well, did you play it? Yeah. Okay, so how old were you? Um. Well, I used to always go to my my grandma's house, and um, there was an NES there. So I'd say, I don't know, since I was like five. Mm. Okay. I always play an NES. My first thing I owned though was the Game Boy. Just the Game Boy. The old gray one. The gray one. Yeah. That's the same here. Uh, like my earliest memory is, I think it's the Game Boy. You're right. And then we had an SNES, and then I had a Game Boy Color. And it was all downhill from there, or uphill, however you want to look at yeah. it. <laughs> so. Good stuff, man. Uh, are you guys excited about Dead Rising Three? I know you are, Matt, right? Yeah, I'm you like the Dead Rising Three. Is that a system seller for you? That's correct. Now, why is that? Explain that to us. Um, well, for the same reason that Zombie U sold the Wii U to me. <laughs> you like uh, your zombies. You like zombies. I, I freaking love zombie games. Mm. I, I I beat AMC is the Walking Dead Survival Instinct three times. You're probably no. the only human that's done that, except maybe like a reviewer somewhere. It was, it was who's now crying. It was it was fantastic and it was terrible. Do you like bad games? Because I like bad movies. I don't like bad games. I just like bad games where I like the environment, I guess. So, like, I guess the environment excuses them. So, like a zombie apocalypse, then. So, Well, in that case, AMC's The Walking Dead. Okay, just Walking Dead fan. Yeah. Because okay. if if Zombie U was bad, then I wouldn't like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so... Well, Dead Rising 3, uh, the game world is going to be larger than the first two games combined. So you're going to have a lot of zombie killing to do. The good. first one wasn't terribly large, though. The second one was pretty decent. The, the first one the first one wasn't terribly large, but it, I, I thought it was perfect. Because it, it made sense. It made sense for what the game was. You were just running around in a mall. In a mall, yeah. It was, a, it was the perfect size. But this this is the largest um, world that Capcom has ever made. So that's pretty cool. Jesus. That, that's good. Yeah. Uh, on a side note, what do you guys think about all these open world games? That seems to be the 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 where we're headed. Like all the the new releases. Do you like that direction that we're headed? I think it's gonna be like the shooter revolution. There's right? got to the be a reason for the open worldness. But I think I think what with kind of what we learned from this generation, the games open world games are good. You got your Skyrim, your Red Dead, you know, whatnot. But you you lose something in that. You lose storytelling. You lose. Um, Pacing, you perfect, lose. Perfect example you would lose be, graphics. Would you know? be um, it's not a terribly huge world, but Arkham City compared to Arkham Asylum, mm-hmm. the 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 storyline was more focused and more. It was just better in in the first game. It wasn't open world compared to, to to City, where everything's just you get everything right away, and it's a little overwhelming. And yeah, and it kind of takes you out of the the story because. There was multi- you spent you spend time yeah. out in the city just doing random stuff, and you forget about the story when you come back to it. And they're like, hey, like, uh, there's there's parts in the games where like, meet me in five minutes. Yeah, Batman, hurry, you gotta get there. Yeah, but you can go do like side missions forever. Right. Yeah, and then you come back and they're like, oh, thank God you're here, Batman, you saved me. This sounds so. like this sounds like what what I what I was doing and probably a lot of other guys are doing is in GTA, with I'm just running around like a retard. I'm like, yeah. oh, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I buy that? And I'm like running around, you know. Yeah. And I come back and I'm like, oh shit, I was supposed to do that, you know. 
Whatever. But now there is hope. I think that 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 they'll get better. Once everyone starts doing it, then innovation starts kicking in. You had to be better than the other open world game. My, you know? my my thing is though is the internet is not social. It is a war. Okay. So, if you guys aren't online, for example, um, or if we're missing a bunch of people, and like the division requires four people, I won't be playing that game unless all four people are on because I don't want to join randoms because randoms are gonna come in there. They're gonna troll. They're gonna break stuff. They're gonna intentionally steal fucking shit. Well, maybe you don't even have to have randoms. Maybe you could do something on your own. In the, in the division, and then get screwed over. When, I'm gonna get freaking raped. Yeah, well, you're gonna get screwed over when you. But I will else. admit that I will be staking out for people firing the flare, and I will be killing those individuals. <laughs> so you're a hypocrite. That is correct. But Matt, I'll tell you this right now: if you ever, if you're ever, ever wanting to play, um, what's it called? Sorry, the division. The division. Just text me, and I will. I will yo, come yo, on. jump on. Because the, the, even like, as a drone, I've said this on like an earlier podcast. This is what I want from gaming. It's so good. I want. Not an MMO, but I want like an online thing where you can like quest with your friends. It's and just a world you can go in. Yeah, just something and, and, you can enjoy with friends. To, we, and we have to buy it for Xbox. Mm. Reigns to be seen. I think I think Aaron's leaning towards PlayStation. That, that, that's fine. Nathan Nathan's only buying Xbox. Okay. No PS4. Well, that's a that's a conversation for that. That is the ultimatum for him. But how how do you feel about games changing their style to go open world, such as MGS Five? Hmm. See, my, my hmm. thing right there is, I, I don't like MGS. But my opinion on that, they should have called it MGS something. It should, be, it should be a side something. It shouldn't be part of the series. Just because it's open world? Because it's open world, I think it should be a an off, like an offshoot, if you will. Or just like one little side thing, and then... I'm assuming all the MGS after this is, are, are going to be open world. But. See, if he's planning that, and if he said that, that I think that's fine. Hmm. But if... if, if the fans are like, oh, we want, we still want story, but they wanted them. M- but the developers, are, the devs are like, yeah, we really want to do an open world MGS, and they should call it MGS something. But yeah, whatever. The, the whole thing about MGS is it's a stealth game. But having an open world, it gives you options to attack a certain base, however you want. You can enter at different angles. You can you can scout the area first. You know. But that that's good though because you're scouting and then you have to use stealth. Because I, I I wouldn't be surprised if they make the game so difficult when you go in there loud that that you will want to use stealth. Well, no. Here's here's what I've heard from people who saw demos and stuff is that when Snake is sneaking around, right? Or I guess I guess it's Big Boss, right? It's just who cool. is Snake? He is Snake. It's Snake. He's wandering around, right? And he gets uh, noticed by a guard. It goes into like a slow motion bullet time thing, I guess, and you have time to shoot him and take him out. I don't like that. I know it, it's kind of it's kind of making it too easy to go in stealth. It's making MGS. See now, now we're talking about this. Is all games are open world? That means that's the area where everyone is starting to go toward. That's that's what people want. That's what people are playing. So now they're making it MGS in that environment, so anyone can jump in and play. My opinion on open world is that you got to fill it with interesting things. Um, like Borderlands, there's there's a lot of content, there's a lot of flavor, there's a lot of personality in that world. MGS just looks like an open desert. But what's going to what's going to fill that space? But the thing with uh, Borderlands is it's, it's not really open world, it's more open sections. There's loading screens and there's yeah, open world sections, yeah. which makes it more Instanced. a little more nice, I guess. But um th- there's games like Skyrim, if you just like run off in some random direction, Something's gonna happen, like like sure. Red Dead too. Yeah, there's tons of missions in Red Dead. I, I, I'm sorry, but Oblivion is better than Skyrim. I I had to I have to say that right now. Oblivion is, is <laughs> has a better environment and a better story. Better environment, yeah. Be, like my thing is like okay, like my thing is with Skyrim is I can't I don't want to complain because that is what Skyrim is. Yeah. At the same time, it's too bland. And I think it should be. An, I should think it should have been an expansion almost, or we should be able to go down to Cyrodiil. Well, that's why you want to get Elder Scrolls Online. I'm not buying that game. You can travel through all of Tamriel. I am gonna stay with Todd Howard and say no. Uh, real quick, Assassin's Creed Liberation HD has been confirmed. We covered that last two weeks ago. Uh, I just want to tell you guys it's confirmed now, so you can be be playing as Aveline. I will not. On your HD consoles. Did Adriana call this? Yeah, we, we mentioned that two weeks ago that Adriano yeah, yeah. did say that, yeah. Um, next is, let's get into our Rockstar stuff. Grand Theft Auto is the big news all this week. That's true. Aside from TGS going on right now, but here in America and in Canada, we're all talking GTA. So what do you guys think? They have, they have, this is the first game with like three characters you can play. Yep. 
Um, they're all males. They're all douchebags, really. Right? Like a lot of rock star characters. Uh, they have they have their own cool things, though. Yeah. But do you think there is room in this game for a female lead character? No. Okay, Matt. Um, I'm going to tell you <laughs> rock stars. Um, not excuse, but what they said. The co-founder, Dan Hauser, has says that the concept of being masculine was so key to this story. Does that is that a good enough excuse of why not to use a woman? Well, may may I may, in, I, in say, may I say this is that is that um w- like women always want to be equal and that that's fine and whatever. But at the same time, if there's a a, a story strictly about a woman, no one complains that there's no men in it. Whereas because there's men in every other game you play. I understand that, but what I mean is is. This story was 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 revolving around these three individuals, and they didn't want any of them to be female. It's not, they're not being sexist. They still have Amanda, which is his wife. They could have just left her out of it and stuff like that. They la- they still have women in the game. No, but playable. That there's that, women who play Grand Theft Auto. Online is a woman. I know. I'm a, I'm a little bit on the fence on this one because you should be able to tell a story however you want. If you want to tell a story with three male protagonists. Yeah. You can tell that way, but but their reasoning's weird. They want the, to be masculine. That's the thing. That's the problem. What's that mean? Yeah, they well, could have they could have made like a tomboyish girl who like who's just as crazy as Trevor. But my my, my my thing is is this is Trevor is is a crazy guy, whatever. So they wanted to be a crazy guy. That's fine. Yeah. My my kind of thoughts on the game is this: Franklin's supposed to be from San Andreas, essentially. It's the same voice actor. I don't even call him Frank. I call him, C- I call him CJ. Okay. He's not though. He's Franklin. I know, but I call him CJ. <laughs> So, um, that's supposed to be like San Andreas. The other guy, uh, Michael, Michael, in my opinion, is supposed to be like in GTA 3 or the, any of the other ones where he's more professional, more mob like. Mm-hmm. And then Trevor is just a crazy guy. <laughs> it's like whatever, which is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> so, and that, I think it fits. I don't know. I would like to see a. GTA game or just Rockstar in Rockstar general. Rockstar in general, yeah. Where they, you portray a female character. They've That'd not be pretty, done one. Pretty cool. Maybe the next Red did. Because I do not want to play Jack Marston. That would be awesome, actually. Jacqueline Marston. Like a, like a female. Jacqueline lead. Marston? Holy shit. That would be awesome. I would. Rockstar, please. That'd be awesome. Bonnie McFarlane. Also, the the agent mm. or agency, whatever the game's called. That one that was like rumored for PlayStation hey, exclusive. That's never coming out. Yeah. They make that a female lead. I'm all in. So. I don't my person. Nope, I don't not masculine that. enough. <laughs> do you uh, guys, do you guys like the the three characters? I've not really got into GTA Five yet. Do you guys, do you like playing as three characters? I I yeah. find it overwhelming. No, I think it's cool. The way the way they've done it is they've 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 tied the stories together. So like, say I'm playing as Michael, right? Yeah. I go to a mission. Franklin shows up. I really like that. I really like. The and story then during the mission, saying. I can switch between them. I enjoy it. I think they they did it really nicely. My problem, my problem with this is uh, just just my just for the free roaming, is I get overwhelmed and I, I kind of like being switch. I kind of like switching between the characters and they live their own lives and they're running around doing whatever. Uh, when you're not playing as them, but my my problem with it is, I I like to micromanage. So I I'm going in and I'm looking at oh there's this business this business I could buy this and make like a business network, but then I'm thinking I'm like oh fuck, now Frank is not gonna have any income from businesses and neither is Trevor because yeah. I'm playing as Michael. So I'm like. Okay, let's split it up. But then I'm like, wait a sec. Now there's uneven amounts of money, and I'm like, who buys what now? <laughs> yeah. So like, and I'm trying to micromanage each individual person's lives. It, it's a disaster. I think I think just choose like your favorite character. And I just think I just want to play as Michael. Yeah. And then I'll just whatever. Yeah. Or or Franklin because he's hilarious. I, I found myself playing as Franklin mostly. Yeah. I think I think Michael's my favorite character, but I've been playing as Franklin mostly for some reason. I just, See, that's kind of cool now that everyone's got their own favorite characters. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Trevor is the funniest though. Well, yeah, he, he's a, he's a great character, but I, I don't particularly enjoy him. <laughs> I, I I love it. So on on the radio, my favorite comment is still, "I'll come in your ear once I get a hold of you." <laughs> <laughs> he he is an amazing character. That sounds yeah. like something you'd say. That's why I know that that's what Tim said. Tim's like Tim's like you'll because I never I hadn't met him yet in the game. He's like he's like you'll love Trevor. He's just like you. And the first thing I hear is, uh, "Trevor, Trevor, come in. I'll come in your ear if I if once I get a hold of you." <laughs> So GTA Online, which is uh, being launched October first, if I'm correct. Wait for for which? If you're correct, sure. Grand oh, Th- GTA Online. Grand Theft Auto Online. That's Europe. No, no, Grand Theft Auto Online. October first, I think. Yeah. Yep. It will be shipping with over 500 missions. So say goodbye to your life fuck after me. that comes out. Freaking Marty, fuck! Finish up the story now, and then have another 500 missions waiting for you. 
to do with you, all your friends. Yep. This is going to be ridiculous. Go Rockstar. Also, if you didn't think the video game industry is not something serious, Grand Theft Auto made a billion dollars in three days. It is the fastest selling media of any sort. Isn't ever. it the second highest like entertainment budget too? A uh, video game budget. That's yes. ridiculous. Yes. That is ridiculous. Actually, no, the highest, I think. Because the previous one... Now, this is just rumored their budget. That was like 250, 260 million. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I believe that The Old Republic was 250 million. And that was previously the highest, most expensive game. Jesus. So Rockstar just beat that one. <laughs> With the single player experience. Yeah. Now, GT Online, are you playing as the three characters in that? You have a, you have another character. You create it's, a character. You create a character, so you could be female. Yeah, that's, you, that's can, what I'm you, you can create a female one. Yeah. And and the thing that's interesting is, there's which like I think I'll actually do. There's right. like a switch. Yeah. There's like a switch wheel in the single player, and there's a fourth missing character. And then I was talking to Aaron, and Aaron said that he's confirmed that as the online character. He's confirmed that. So how's he confirmed that? Is he playing GTA? Well, online? apparently, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's seen like a, an article or something. So my thing is, now essentially with you can make your favorite character and then play as him in the story but not not in the story but just free roam and then when you want to do story missions you just switch from the other guys mm. yes Aaron Gallagher I also had Rockstar the other day and I I personally confirmed here on day <laughs> one patch yeah well that's all the time we have uh, for t- this episode episode 34 that's a lot of episodes eh? we, we, we should do a rant there's no time for a rant I'm sorry man we are I all had, out of time I had a rant too did you I do what is it I uh, it, it, it kind of come up when Marty was talking about um how old people are not like like <laughs> no, no no this isn't this isn't this yeah, isn't okay. insulting Keep going. how older people or whatever are, are like that are that didn't grow up with technology like kind of feel foreign when technology comes in to their life and whatever mm-hmm. and and changes so my thing is is should we be marketing and hitting these like the older audiences as well as people who don't know or don't look up technology as well. Cause I noticed you, no. all, you were also mentioned in the show at some point where you were saying that, uh, well, if you don't know any, if you don't look up gaming, you will know nothing about this. Whereas we have friends like, like for example, Zach, he knows nothing. Like he, he doesn't know anything about <laughs> apps. He knows nothing about like that stuff unless I tell him and he's into technology. Yeah. So like where should, where or like how should we be reaching these people? Because they don't know what's happening. It's kind of hard because if you don't have interest in it, you don't really care. That's so true. Even, even if I went up to someone and said, "Hey, look at iOS 7. they'd be like, "Oh, that's cool," but they wouldn't really give a crap, you know, because they're it, not interested. They'll that, probably download it on just like one day and be like, "Okay, that's cool," and don't really care. And if you market specifically towards the older folk, then you lose your other demographics because you ever seen the commercials for the the bathtubs that he sit in? Yes. <laughs> and all the old people. Does that make you want to buy it? No. A bunch of old people sitting in the no. bathtub. No. <laughs> Well, it, well, but the thing is, it's supposed to be meant for old people, though. I wouldn't mind it, now that I think about it. I'm an old man, so I'd, I would love one. <laughs> yeah. but, but, okay, but, but my thing is, in this case, is, is, is would it be a good idea to place it in areas that everything, everyone would see? So big billboards. If okay, Say, for example, I don't know, some new app is iOS 7. This is, iOS 7 is coming out. Let's plaster all the billboards. So it's going to be directed maybe toward our audience, but old people are going to see that. Mm-hmm. And they're going to recognize that when they when they upgrade or whatever. You I mean, I think mean? I think the older audience is a it's a fairly large demographic and a demographic that has money. You know, it's the baby boomers actually. It's massive. Yeah, so they're they're really like a really important market right now. Um, but I think Marty's right. It's it's hard to be a hip company like Apple and and market to older people. That's that's kind of why like um, have you seen those Samsung ads where they make fun of Apple's um, yeah. standing in line and stuff? Yeah. And that that one that one guy's there, and he's like on like his his like his Galaxy phone or something. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm just waiting for my my parents." And his parents come up; they're really old. And they're like, "Oh, I can't believe we're getting the new iPhone or whatever." Good commercial. No, it, no, no. You do not. It, the the dumb thing about that commercial is they insulted every single Apple person. Okay. Yeah. They've insulted an entire demographic of people. I thought that, was... that they were, that they're trying to sway over. To the Galaxy phones. That's correct. They've insulted us. I thought it was pretty funny. No, they insulted us, and so now we're not going to do crap about their new phones. Now I, I have a question again. Now, what about what about people who are in our age group mm-hmm. that we aren't hitting, such as Zach, such as like even Aaron. Aaron is big in the games, but like he knows crap about phones. He knows like nothing. Well, yeah, he knows everything it's, about gaming, but like, that just comes down to a person's interests. I think again, he doesn't care. That's fair, I guess. 
I mean, he's he's using an iPhone like 3GS, right? I think it could possibly be it's a, a 3G. No, it's, it's a 3G. 3G. It's the first one. Yeah. I have a 3GS. I can give him. I mean, holy crap! <laughs> no, he said it's okay. No, he can get a free phone from his carrier. You just say he doesn't want to. Oh, oh. His bill would go up too. Uh, it? not if you fight. If you fight with Telus, you're okay. Because he doesn't have a data plan. Yeah, no, you can just say I don't want data. You sure for an iPhone? I I I did I I've done that like they'll be like, they'll, they'll be like yeah they'll be like mandatory data and I'm like well would you like me to continue paying my bill or you want me to go over there and they'll be like oh well okay <laughs> so anyway I, I think bring you I gotta bring you to places <laughs> this is why you should go into marketing there's a lot of people who are looking for good marketing uh, people yeah. so anyway that's it for tonight um this has been day one patch episode thirty four uh, check us out on YouTube you can find us all there yep uh, BBM this weekend, people. Oh, BBM's. BBM's uh, going cross platform this weekend. I'm going to throw the do a little shutout right now. BBM's going cross platform, Android and iOS this weekend. So we'll be on the, we'll be on the BBMs, all yep. of us now, not, not just me. So all you BBM users. Do it up. All you BBM There's a lot users. of BBM users. And there will be a fuck ton more this weekend. Starting, what, what time is it right now? Starting like 40 minutes ago. I'm freaking out <laughs> right now. Nope. It's the end game. I'm dead. Okay, yeah, and like us on Twitter. Um, Check out our wicked vines. I'm not doing it. Don't listen to Marty. We don't make vines. We sh- <laughs> hopefully we'll be tweeting more. And coming up, and this will happen. I know we've promised Let's Plays before. <laughs> this will happen. Well, in other we, okay, videos. hold the phone here. Let, 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 I think we should do a formal update. We have a capture card now. We've purchased, That's we, correct. We have purchased a, credit, a capture card. There's issues between editing between Windows and <laughs> Mac, and I don't know how to do it, and they don't know how to do it, so then I don't know how to so do it. So it's all in my hands, so it will happen now. But it's um, good though we have we have the, and I've supplied you with the cables. Yep, thank you, Matt. Uh, so yeah, Marty, you have this entire library to choose from. Um, I, need, I need to get a library card. I'll give you guys a, <laughs> I'll give you guys a rundown of what we're doing. Uh, Marty here, he kind of joined the HD party late. We're we're looking for names for this segment too. I I like late to the party with Marty. Yeah, that's not oh, <laughs> that, that's pretty good. I like late. Actually, I really like that. I really that, that's really that's really good. But anyway, anyway, Marty hasn't played a lot of the great games that have come out. He knows about them. That's why he's on the podcast. I've played them too. He's knowledgeable. Um, so yeah, he, we're, he's, he's going to go back. We're going to do some less plays of some old classic, current gen, soon to be last gen games. Um, that's gonna that sounds weird. That, yeah, <laughs> but th- that's a perfect name. Late to the party. So I think we'll choose our, our first game, and whenever Marty's ready, we'll get those up for you. It should be exciting. Video versions of Apps with Marty. Video versions of Apps with Marty. So you can get all your app updates on the fly. On the fly? Jesus. On the fly. And live video of me playing <laughs> we'll apps. you streaming on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. No. All right. Th- thanks for listening. Uh, remember to share with your friends, because we need some listeners. It'd be awesome. Share with people you hate, too. We got li- We got listeners. We just want more. We, we, yeah, we, we love all our current listeners, if you are out there. If you're listening to this now, we love you. They talk to me, so I know we're good. <laughs> they talk to Matt. Okay, good stuff. Thanks, guys. Kind of love you. <laughs>